What's up, Live community? My name is Jansen, and today I want to show you some awesome things inside of Ableton Live. Uh, many of you may run your tracks in session view or in arrangement view of Ableton Live, so we're going to kind of run through Ableton and see some pros and cons of running both to see maybe some things that um, you would like to run tracks in one or the other. So let's dive into Ableton now and kind of dissect this a little bit. So we're inside of Ableton Live. I'm running Ableton Live Suite, uh, and we're currently in session view. And so session view is uh, made up of uh, these vertical columns called tracks, and then they have these horizontal rows called scenes. And so for um, just kind of to break this down, think of scenes as kind of like songs. Uh, so I could have you know song one, I could have song two, uh, and I'm kind of just renaming these by uh, hit, hitting Command R. You can also right click and rename there. So let's just do maybe like six scenes and over here these are more or less instruments so you have to think of them, these tracks kind of like instruments so let's say for here I could have cues uh, and then I could do another one that would maybe be click or let's do maybe the acoustic guitar and then let's do another one drums um, keys or piano whatever you'd like and then maybe like a pad <coughs> So, now that I have these five instruments in place, I'm going to open up the file browser here, and I actually have a song called Glory Known. Uh, it's 75 beats per minute in B flat, and I'm going to start dragging in uh, one at a time these clips. So, my cues are going to go in the cues column, acoustic, drums, and I'm just going to drag these in, and the pad, synth pad, here we go. Okay, so you see how we have one song here, and we can we can go do uh, to a totally different song and start dragging in the same instruments for song number two. Uh, so that's one kind of way to run your tracks in Session View. I will say that Session View is probably really good if you want to run tracks uh, from a live setting. So I know that this program, Ableton Live, is more constructed for DJs. So if they have like a like a spin table, or if you're MDing, or any of those kind of things, this Session View really works well to kind of loop things on the fly or to have a lot more um, just on the fly control in the moment. Uh, arrangement view I think is more for like a recording atmosphere so there's a lot of tweaks and things you can do inside of that uh, but I it's set up more like a traditional DAW where you can plug instruments in and record and see it on a timeline so we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Uh, another way that you can set uh, your flow up inside of session view is instead of doing an entire song you can break up your song into song parts like uh, intro verse, chorus, bridge. So uh, let's go ahead and remove the rest of these scenes and I'm going to flip over to arrangement view. So there's like a neat little tip here. These two icons actually make up the Ableton Live logo. So if you're wondering what these are, yes it switches between the two views but it also makes up that logo. So pretty cool little tip there. So I can click on uh, these buttons or I can hit the tab key to switch back and forth between arrangement view and session view. So we're still kind of in session view. I want to switch over to arrangement view to, to show you just one thing um, to kind of get your song set up and kind of chopped up into song sections. So we're going to drag these same uh, files in. So I have my cues, my acoustic, my drums, my keys slash piano, and then my pad. Oops, drag it all the way over. There you go. And now that we're in here, I can see that there are cue sections. If we play it here, we can kind of hear. Intro two. So the three. intro starts. Also, we want to make sure that we change the BPM to 75, so we get an accurate count here. So. Intro two, three, four. So there is the beginning of the intro section, and you can kind of see another cue over here, and that's going to start the next section at uh, beat 41. So. In arrangement view, there is this awesome tool called the loop bar. So I'm going to click and drag it over, and we're going to start at beat 17 and end at beat 41. So if I just click the loop bar now, it's going to highlight all the stems in between those two uh, measurements. So I know that at 17, the intro starts, and measure 41, on uh, beat 41 rather, the uh, verse starts. So let's just right click. And there's an option here that says consolidate time to new scene. I'm going to click that. 
And now if we go back to session view, there is a song three that we didn't have before. The difference here is this is actually the intro of the song. So now I can rename this to intro. And now I have a, a song section that's just gonna play the intro of that song instead of playing the entire song. So now I can go back to arrangement view and uh, we can drag the loop bar to the next section to get the verse. So let's expand that a little bit. There we go. Right click on it, consolidate to new time scene. Go back to session view here. And instead of intro one, this will be the verse. And you can just kind of keep doing this throughout the entire song until you have each section labeled. So when you go back over here, you can have intro, verse, chorus, bridge. And now I can quickly jump back and forth between song sections instead of playing the entire song. So you can see how session view built on these clips, kind of like a spreadsheet view where you have the tracks here and the scenes here uh, to kind of quickly jump back and forth between jumping song sections, looping back, or just playing on the fly a, a complete song section. So there's some really good things here. You can also add any kind of audio effects to session view, uh, but I really think this is better if you're going to use it on the fly, if you're going to map this to a MIDI controller or anything like that. So let's go over to uh, session, I'm sorry, arrangement view. And we already have some tracks in here with some content. So let's say that this is song one. So I'm going to actually recolor all these stems to be the same color. And let's say we wanted to start a second song but we want it to kind of fade in the second song as the first song's fading out, right? So even though I know it's the same song, let's go ahead and duplicate these clips. And we're gonna drag them down into five new tracks here. I can split them. There we go. Awesome. So now it's the same song here and here, but just for intents and purposes, just um, let's make, make, you know, kind of pretend that this is a second song. So as one song is ending, I can drag these over to where when this song is finishing, this song begins. And I can do this as many times as I want with as many songs as I want. Uh, I can even change the color to kind of give me a little bit more clarity as to song one and song two in my set. I think that was the right color. There we go. Whoop, maybe I had it right the first time. There we go. So, you can see kind of how, as one song is fading out, you can kind of hear it coming back in and it's gonna play the entire song from scratch again. So this could be a, a good transition element between the first song ending and the second song starting. You can even actually change uh, the tempo and automate the tempo from song to song. If one song starts in 4-4 and then it changes to 6-8, you can change the time signature as well. Um, and so that's one really awesome way of, of running tracks in arrangement view. Uh, one thing you can also do, uh, because arrangement view again is really good for recording. So let's say I want to get rid of all these tracks and I want to set up um, like a drum track, right? So I'm going to record some drums and this is an audio track that I'm going to record too. So let's drag the drums in. Okay, so here's our drum track, but I also want to insert a new MIDI track here because I have a MIDI controller attached to my computer that I want to use, like a keyboard or maybe it's a drum pad or you actually have electronic drums that you want to use. You can attach this into your computer and now as you're listening to the actual drums, we're going to record here uh, and make sure that we can mimic the drums. So I can actually drop in a drum rack. And so now I can put in uh, drum hits. So if I go to drum hits, there is a kick. So let's do, so there's a good kick. We can put it in a one. So there's a kick drum there. We can do a snare. So that's cool. So now, the notes uh, A and A sharp one, I can actually map these to the keys on my MIDI controller. And as the song's playing, I can record inside of arrangement view and see uh, the song actually go on a timeline from left to right. So this is really good to be able to see, uh, you know, if you have programs like Pro Tools or Logic or GarageBand, they're very similar from on a timeline from left to right. And you can see as you're recording those tracks, 
uh, to kind of keep up with where you are in the song. So this is really great because um, you can drop your effects right in the chain and see uh, how all your tracks are laid out. And so whether you're, whether you're using session view or arrangement view, both will really do what you want. Uh, it's just different ways of navigating it. But I would say if you're, if you're performing in a live setting, uh, or you're doing a lot of rehearsals live or anything like that, I would rather use session view because I think there's a lot more you can do with it. If you're in a recording setting, if you have a home studio, or if you're kind of just trying to lay down a track that you can have later, I would switch over to arrangement view to be able to kind of um, lay out your tracks on a linear timeline and kind of get what you need from that aspect as well. So that's pretty much it for the d distinct differences between Session View and Arrangement View. Just dive into Ableton, have fun, kind of explore, and you know, it's your preference. You choose what you want to do. So until next time, again, my name is Jansen. We'll see you later.